Welcome everyone, it is I, Brother Scott, bringing you the daily Bible reading for today, and we will be in Genesis chapters 11 through 13. If you have your Bible, please follow along, and uh, I suggest getting the Word of God, the authorized version, the King James Bible, because it is God's Word as we have it in the English language, so if you have a modern version, you're probably not going to get the entirety of this, something might have been changed, or some sort of way, so, and God says not to add or take away from his word, so get yourself the right Bible if you don't have one already, and if you have uh, some beef about this uh, version of the Bible, well, do your own study, and uh, there's lots of study guides out there, and um, places you can find where the modern versions take things out and change things, and you compare uh, the modern versions with the the authorized version, so, amen. All right, well, here we go, and we are in Genesis chapter 11, so I encourage you to do your own Bible reading on your own personal time and choose a uh, a uh, chart somewhere. You can find them on the internet, or if your church has uh, has them at your church, or you can print out your own. Uh, some so many different ways you can do it, and I encourage you to do so today. All right, so verse 1 of chapter 11 says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go, two, let us make brick, and burn them throughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, uh, whose top uh, may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So these people are trying to build a tower to get to the third heaven, to try to get to God their own way. And if you just look down the road, if you're here in Florida or or live next to a space space center. Uh, you have rockets shooting up into space, trying to get to the third heaven to try to get to to heaven their own way. So have that going on even today. And uh, so let's continue on. In verse five, uh, he sa uh, says here, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, uh, which they have imagined to do. So vain imagination and imagining that we're going to try to get up our own way and do our own thing. Uh, and he continues on, it says, Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, uh, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. And verse 10 says, These are the generations of Shem, Shem, was an hundred years old, and begat Arphaxad two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxad five hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Arphaxad lived five and thirty years, and begat uh, Selah. And Arphaxad lived after he begat Selah four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Selah lived thirty years, and begat Eber. And Selah lived after he begot Eber four hundred and three years, and begat sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begat Peleg. And Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years, and begat Reu. And Peleg lived after he begat Reu. Two hundred and nine years, and begat sons and daughters. And Ryu lived two and thirty years, and begat uh, Sirug. 
and Ryu lived after he begat Sirug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Sirug lived 30 years and begat uh, Nahor. And Sirug lived after he begat Nahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Tira. And Nahor lived after he begat Tira 119 years and begat sons and daughters. And Tira lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Tira. Tira begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran begat Lot. And Haran died before his father Tira in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took their, them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife uh, Milcah, uh, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka, um, but Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Tira took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto uh, Haran and dwelt there, and the days of Tira were two hundred and five years, and Tira died in Haran. Chapter 12 Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, God uh, says to Abram, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. But God said not to take all those people with him. He said to go with them, to go himself. But uh, a little disobedience there. Uh, but we're all guilty of that, I'm sure, in some form or way. So that was uh, where Abram disobeyed the Lord by not going himself and taking taking family with him, and perhaps none of this stuff would have happened that's about to happen if he would have just fully obeyed the Lord. And how often do we partially obey him, but uh, partial obedience is not obedience at all, is, is how it's uh, uh, people say. So, verse 6, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of uh, Sikkim, and unto the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was uh, then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and uh, Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. And there was a famine in the land. And Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there. And we know what happens every time somebody goes down. Uh, not good. Uh, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass, when he was come near to enter into Egypt that he said unto Sarai his wife, Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon, therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall set, uh, see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake. 
and my soul shall live because of thee. Hmm, big mistake there. Uh, and it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. The princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the uh, woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. And he had sh uh, sheep and oxen and his asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Because Abram lied to Pharaoh and didn't tell him the truth. And Pharaoh was about to do a big sin. And uh, and Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why hast thou not? Uh, why didn't thou tell me that she was thy wife? Why uh, saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Now therefore, behold, thy wife, take her and go thy way. And Pharaoh com uh, commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away and his wife, and all that they had. Chapter 13 And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai unto the place of the altar, which uh, he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle, and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled in uh, then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will take, go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zorar. Uh, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. Hmm. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Hmm. Not a good thing about to happen here. Uh, but the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up, lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall they, uh, thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in uh, Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Amen. So, there you have it. Abram is called to go to that land that God said to go to. But he wasn't supposed to bring his family. And then all this uh, uh, goes on here. And then Lot ends up uh, looking towards Sodom and uh, going that way. And then uh, 
God makes a covenant with uh, Abram. And we're about to see what happens next. So uh, come back tomorrow and we'll be reading uh, Genesis 14 through 17 tomorrow. So hope you'll come back for that. And you're welcome to read that on your own time. Do your own Bible reading and study. I encourage it. And so till tomorrow, um, we'll be wrapping it up. And so thank you for watching. And may the Lord richly bless you. And y'all have a great and wonderful rest of your Saturday. And remember, Jesus saves. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by him. So it's through Jesus and what he done, did on the cross. And nothing else will save your soul but Jesus Christ and his precious holy blood. And once you trust him as your Savior, he will wash away all your sin. And the Holy Spirit will come and dwell inside of you forever and ever. And then after that, it's uh, up to us as we desire to allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of us each and every day and not give into the flesh and try to walk a Christ-like life as, uh, as we are on this earth before the Lord catches us away or we die first. All right, well, that'll wrap it up. So thank you for watching and until um, next time, this is Brother Scott signing off. Bye-bye for now.